since we first set foot on Inazuma. So many things have happened since then! Yeah, we've definitely made some progress on our journey. So, where should we go today? Huh? What's up? So you don't have a vision after all. Seems like I've mistaken you for someone else. At the very least, you should make sure you've got the right person before you go attacking them. No, wait. Even when you've got the right person, you shouldn't go attacking them out of the blue. It's dangerous. Have you ever met someone by the name of Kaedahara Kazuha? He carries a sword just like you. I've also heard that he possesses an animal vision. That's none of your business. Huh. Never mind. You don't look like you know anything anyway. I'm wasting my time. What the heck is this guy's problem? Coming around here, waving that weird sword in our faces, and he didn't even apologize. Seems like a real nutcase. Well, one thing's for sure. No why are we telling him anything about Kazuha? Hey! Don't be mean! I'm on smart lots of the time! Anyway, just to be on the safe side, we should go find Kazuha right away and tell him to watch his back. Oh? What kind of hunch? A special connection? You mean, beyond already knowing each other? Maybe a little... Uh, but then again, most people look pretty much the same once they start fighting, so that doesn't really prove anything. Anyway, there's no time to lose! Let's go tell Kazuha so we won't get into any danger! Paimon heard that the Crux fleet is stocking up in Rito at the moment. Let's look for him there! Where Kazuha is. <laughs> You're looking for Kazuha too, huh? Guess he must have done something impressive after all. <laughs> well, we took the small vessels into Rito on a routine supply run, only this time, as soon as we entered the harbor, we ran into a huge crowd of Inazumans, all of them wanting to know about Kazuha. If it's because of that battle on Nizuchi Beach, Captain Beto had a great run there too, but I don't see her getting this kind of attention. Kazuha keeps to himself most of the time. In fact, there are times when he doesn't even listen to the captain, but she just laughs it off. <laughs> oh, so you still don't know what he did? I've heard bits and pieces. It's something about him blocking the Raiden Shogun's Muso no Hitotachi. Is it really as big a deal as everyone's making it out to be? Really? Wow. When you put it like that, it all makes sense. <laughs> In that case, his newfound stardom is well-deserved. He was called away earlier by some people from the Tenryo Commission. They said they had something important to discuss with him. I thought they'd come to arrest him at first. Turns out they couldn't have been friendlier to him. Seems like they really respect the guy. Just a little while ago, this would have been completely unimaginable. Guess we'll go pay a visit to the Tenryo Commission. All right then. I'll just stay here and carry on trying to fend off the crowd. Oh? It's you. Greetings. We were just discussing the repealing of the Vision Hunt Decree. Since you're here, you're very welcome to listen in on the conversation. We invited Mr. Kaidahara here to extend a gesture of goodwill on behalf of the Shogunate. 
Your hard work has secured for us the agreeable state of affairs that we now enjoy. Also, I've been granted the chance to correct my clan's past mistakes, and for that, I'm deeply grateful. The Almighty Shogun has issued a large array of directives aimed at resolving, or at least easing, the tensions that have built up over the years. The Tri Commission has made the recommendation to use this opportunity to restore the honor of the Kaidahara name. Regarding the history of the Kaidahara clan, I trust that you're already somewhat informed? In short, there was once a group of select bladesmiths who served the Shogun directly, responsible for upholding and further developing the traditional blade-forging arts of the Almighty Shogun. The Kaidahara clan belonged to this class. But there came a time when some of these bladesmiths revolted and fled to Snezhnaya. Both the Kaidahara and Kamisato clans were held accountable for lax oversight and entered a period of great turmoil. We later learned that the whole misadventure had been secretly orchestrated by the Fatui. Attributing all of the blame to the Kamisato and Kaidahara clans was neither proper nor just. Considering Mr. Kaidahara has once more made an outstanding contribution to Inazuma, the Almighty Shogun believes he should not only be rewarded for his achievements, but also receive recompense for the excessive punishment borne by his clan in the past. In the interest of preventing further harassment of the bladesmith clans by the Fatui, we chose not to publicly release the findings of our investigations into these matters. We trust you can understand why this was necessary. This is a true honor. I am delighted to be in a position to receive the goodwill of the Almighty Shogun, and the Shogunate at large. However, would I be correct to assume that this magnanimous gesture does not come without some strings attached? I can assure you that nothing could be further from the truth. We seek only to correct a past injustice. With the Kaidahara clan's reputation and occupation restored, the Kaidaharas will be bladesmiths once more, and your wanderings will finally come to an end. You will be able to lead a safe and prosperous life in Inazuma City with the Almighty Shogun's blessing and full support of the Shogunate. I have grown accustomed to life among the elements. I fear I would no longer feel at home behind the tall walls of a stately abode. Yet my ancestors did indeed take great pride in the name of Kaidahara, and the art of blade-making for which it stood. I do have a responsibility to restore their honor. I sense some hesitation in your words. Should you accept this offer, I imagine many of the malicious rumors currently circulating through the populace will disappear. Malicious rumors? All we heard on the way here was so much praise that we almost wondered whether there was another Kaidahara Kazuha in town. Well, to some, the Musa no Hitotachi is something that can never be defeated. They cannot accept the idea that Mr. Kaidahara really parried the Shogun's strike. Also, eyewitnesses saw him using the power of Electro in addition to that of Animo. As a result, the falsehood that Kaidahara Kazuha was using a delusion began to spread. What? But that doesn't make sense. Using a delusion turns you old and frail, and Kazuha still looks fine. That is correct. However, to some people, the idea of a single person wielding two elements at once is a more inconceivable notion still. This is just one of many similar rumors. I am very uncomfortable with being the subject of public discussion, no matter whether it brings suspicion or stardom my way. But perhaps, if the Shogunate is willing to publicly support me, this situation will blow over more quickly. This is precisely why I encourage you to give our offer some serious thought. It stands to benefit all of us. Hmm. Please allow me some time to consider. In fact, let us put this discussion on hold for the moment. Well then, what brings the two of you here? Yikes! We nearly forgot about the most important thing! Why would such a dangerous individual be looking for me? No. This puzzles me as much as it does you. My fighting forms were taught to me by my family, based on techniques originally developed for blade testing. We undergo rigorous training to standardize every motion the blade is put through, so that each can be fairly assessed for quality. Over time, these techniques came to form something of a Kaidahara sword art, focused on blade testing, 
but with a full repertoire of combat forms. Those forms are quite different from the more practical ones typically used by samurai in battle. So it's hard to imagine that the similarity you speak of was coincidence alone. All the more reason to watch your back! This guy was a serious nutcase. Indeed. He sounds highly aggressive. Anyone he targets is at risk of serious injury. Or worse. In that case, I will send some men out immediately to search for him. Thank you. I must say, I am now very curious about this matter, and I will also need some time to consider your offer. I will first join the Traveler in investigating the one who attacked her, then give you a conclusive answer upon my return. Very well. Please stay safe. Come on. Let's go and track down your aggressor. The detective agency knows the most about what goes on in town. Let's see what Ryuji has to say. Hey there! We'd like to ask you a quick question. Do you know if anyone around here has been looking for him? Uh, for Kaidahara Kazuha, we mean. <laughs> Aha! So this is the renowned Mr. Kaidehara. I've heard a lot about you. It is an honor to finally meet you today. You are too kind. We are currently investigating an assault and would appreciate any help you can offer. Oh? You were targeted in an assault? Let me think. I can't seem to recall anything of immediate interest. Mr. Kaidehara is currently the talk of the town, so there are always a lot of people looking for him. To be honest with you, our detective agency has recently been receiving many inquiries from people wishing to obtain Mr. Kaidehara's personal information. Some of them were offering us millions of mora just to gather the information they want. If these were more legitimate commissions, Songo would have snapped them up in an instant. M millions Of mora? Whoa! Oh, wait. Even at that price, you probably still shouldn't. Please. Accept my thanks for looking out for my privacy. Of course. No matter what, we only take on legitimate cases. We don't make our money by revealing details of other people's day-to-day -day life just for the sake of it. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a little off topic. What I'm really trying to say is, it doesn't surprise me that a complete stranger is looking for Mr. Kaedehara. But I wouldn't know where to begin if we want to connect this with an assault. Then let's put that connection aside for now. Have there been any other attacks or similar incidents recently that stand out as particularly unusual? The Tenryo Commission had very few leads, and I thought you might have some information from different sources. It's true that the Commissioners aren't clued up about every little thing that goes on out in the streets. But typically, it's only the most trivial events that manage to escape their attention. If anyone had been out there attacking people, that would be assault, in which case the Tenryo Commission would absolutely get involved. That, oh, that does make sense. Uh-oh. Looks like the trail's already run cold. I still find it difficult to believe that whoever attacked you hasn't been causing any trouble elsewhere. Few people possess your prowess in battle. So unless you were the first person he targeted, Someone is certain to have been hurt by now. I am well aware of your talents. There is no need to be humble around me. In fact, I'm quite relieved that you were the one he targeted. It would cause me great grief to see someone become critically injured or lose their life because of me. For the poor victim, this would be a completely senseless crime. Don't worry, we'll find him. It seems you are every bit the selfless hero they make you out to be, Mr. Kaidehara. Surely this same concern for your fellow man is what drove you to fearlessly raise your blade against the almighty Shogun. You flatter me. Truth be told, I don't know quite what came over me in that moment. <laughs> you are much too humble. Don't worry, I completely understand your concerns. I will try my best to gather whatever leads I can for you. Oh, actually, there was one strange incident over the last few days. 
It doesn't involve an attack, though. Let me tell you about it just in case. Sure. During times like this, the more information we have, the better. All right, then. Recently, two people went missing from the city at around the same time. One of them is a pretty well-known collector, surnamed Nagato. The other, Amenoma Yuya, is a samurai from the Amenoma clan. Amenoma! Now there's a familiar name! Right. Yuya is the nephew of Amenoma Togo, the owner of Amenoma Smithy. Two grown men going missing at the same time. Hmm... Their cases are likely connected, but I don't know much in the way of details. I recalled this because Amenoma Yuya is also an accomplished martial artist who is skilled with the blade. Perhaps he is the one you are looking for. Understood. Though it seems highly unlikely to me. I neither know this man, nor do I have any idea why he may wish to attack me. Sure! Can't hurt! We never knew what we might find out along the way. Thank you, Ryuji. We'll start by making some inquiries at the Amenoma Smithy. Sounds good. All the best with your investigation. I'll get moving shortly myself. Ah, if it isn't Kaida Harakazuha. What brings you here today? Huh? You two know each other? Yes. The Kaedahara and Amenoma clans were both members of the Raiden Gokaden. Historically, there have always been deep links between the two clans. After I returned to Inazuma, I visited Mr. Amenoma to pay my respects. Yes, you may recall the story of the Raiden Gokaden from the Iridori Festival. Though all bladesmiths trace their craft back to the same source, over time, each of us has arrived at a different blade-making philosophy, spawning the development of different branches of the same art. As an example, the Amenoma art strives to emulate the abiding patience and determination of water as it turns stone to sand. There is nothing mystical to our work. There is only practice, day in and day out. Until both body and mind have memorized the craft, turning each motion of every technique into an intrinsic part of the bladesmith's life. As for the art of the Kaedehara clan, I believe it's called the Ishin art. That's right. Ishin art strives for complete harmony between blade and mind from the moment that forging begins. For only a blade thus forged can capture and convey its maker's thoughts and feelings, and eventually become an extension of its wielder's will. Indeed. Most samurai choose their blades, but an Ishin blade chooses its owner. You are, without a doubt, the most worthy wielder of an Ishin blade. It gladdens my heart to see that although the Kaidahara clan has fallen on hard times, its ideals and virtues are alive and well. You overestimate me. My actions are guided by my own personal sentiments, not by any noble aspirations on behalf of my clan. But let's get back on topic. The purpose of our visit today is to gather some information on your missing nephew. We hope to assist with the investigation. It may turn out that this case is connected to another we are pursuing. Ah, oh, yes. My nephew. <sighs> I reported the case to the Tenryo Commission, but I haven't heard anything back so far. He didn't say a word before he left, which is very unlike him. I'm still completely at a loss on what to make of it, but I've done what I can so far. Worrying is futile. All I can do now is wait for the news from the Tenryo Commission. We heard that there was a collector involved in the disappearance too. Know anything about that? Yes. On the morning that Yuya went missing, he gave me a very cryptic look and said that he was going to give me a great gift. I believe he went to collect the item from Mr. Nagato after that. The next thing I heard was that a fire had broken out at the warehouse. 
and neither of them came back. Yes. Strange, isn't it? I wonder what could have caused it. Unfortunately, there was very little evidence left behind, so nobody knows what really happened. Hmm. Do you have any thoughts on what Yuya may have wanted to give you? If I had to guess, it must have been some kind of rare weapon. Otherwise, there would have been no reason for him to get my hopes up. He's never been particularly interested in blade forging, but has always had a fondness for blade testing, and can sense even the most minute differences in blade quality. He is extraordinarily talented in martial arts, particularly when it comes to the art of the sword. Truth be told, we have some information that you may find to be objectionable. The person we are looking for, he attacked this friend of mine. Based on the evidence we have gathered so far, only Yuya seems to match the suspect's profile. What? No. Absolutely impossible. Yuya is not that kind of person. He is humble and kind. Even his training is done with the goal of calming his mind. He has never gotten into a fight before. Huh. Is that so? Yes. If there's one thing I can say for certain, it's that Yuya would never draw his blade without a very good reason. But, with that said, it's equally out of character for him to just disappear with neither farewell nor fair warning. I also cannot know what course of action he might be capable of if coerced or otherwise compelled by circumstances unbeknownst to me. Anyway, should you find him, please let me know as soon as possible. Don't worry, you have our word. Hmm, from the sound of that, Paimon doesn't think Yuya was the one who attacked us as well. Yes. It sounds as if something happened when the two men met each other. Let's pay a visit to the Nagato household. I'm very sorry, but we cannot afford to pay what we owe right now. My husband has gone missing, and I'm still trying to find him. No, no, you misunderstand us. We are here to help with the investigation. We'd like to ask you some questions about Mr. Nagato's disappearance, if we may. Ah, I see. I thought the debt collectors had come to visit again. I'm sorry you have to see me in this dreadful state. Has some new information come out? Do you know where he's gone? I'm afraid we don't have any new information at the moment. We're still trying to find out as much as we can to inform our search. With this in mind, can we perhaps ask some questions about your family's current situation? Paimon's struggling to understand why a collector would be strapped for Mora. <sighs> That's a long story. Ever since I've known him, he's been an avid collector of all sorts of things. He'd always get so animated when he was showing them to me. I knew nothing about the items myself, but seeing how enthusiastic and excited they made him, I was happy to believe that they were just extremely important to him. Everything was fine when we first got married, but as time went by, things changed for the worse. Uh-oh! What happened? He lost his sense of restraint. He started buying more and more things, and even resorted to borrowing money just so he could pay for them. Our expenses really spiraled out of control when he started getting interested in weapons. It was awful. There were days when he'd spend hours down at the warehouse, admiring his weapons even as debt collectors were descending upon our house. He wouldn't sell them, wouldn't even touch them. Just sat there staring at them like he was in a trance. I'm happy he has a hobby and I'm willing to support him, but making ends meet has to come first. I've tried talking to him about it so many times, but he never listens. On the last day that I saw him, I gave him an ultimatum. I said, if he refused to sell his collectibles and pay off his debts, I would divorce him and take the children with me. Whoa! And that led to an argument. Actually, it didn't. 
Generally, he's a quiet man, who likes to go with the flow. On most things, he leaves the decision-making to me. You must understand, I never would have dreamed of threatening him with divorce if the debts hadn't pushed our family to the brink. After I said those words, he froze, and was silent for a long time. When he finally spoke, he awkwardly mumbled that he would pick out a few items to sell. His voice was so meek and pitiful that I felt an urge to take everything back. But then what? If I didn't draw the line, what would happen to our family? Had I not indulged his bad habits, we wouldn't have found ourselves in such a predicament. And I also don't know if he had actually come to his senses, or if he was simply angry with me. The next thing I heard was that our warehouse had caught fire, and both he and the buyer had gone missing. I see. I understand. Amin Omayuya came to purchase a weapon from Mr. Nagato. During the sale, a fire broke out at the warehouse, and both men disappeared. At first, I assumed they must have gotten into an argument over the price. But my husband has never been one to negotiate. He never even haggles when he's out buying groceries, so it's hard to imagine him getting into a fierce argument. Hmm. Maybe he was feeling the pressure from the debts? I don't know. He just disappeared after the warehouse burned down. Perhaps he's too afraid to come home, now that all his collectibles have been lost in the fire, and he's got no way to pay off our debts. <sighs> Even though I'm still a little mad at him, we're a family, and I want us to face our family's crisis together. As long as he's willing to turn over a new leaf, I know we can work things out. Please don't get upset. There could be more to this situation than meets the eye. If collecting things is a habit that Mr. Nagato had his whole life, it is quite unusual for this habit to change so drastically over a short period. But the information we gathered from the other side suggests Amenomayuya is also a mild-mannered man who would not be likely to start an argument. Hmm. This situation is getting a little confusing. A little confusing? More like completely mystifying! Let's try a change of scenery, and see if we can piece together what we've learned. Rest assured, we'll notify you if we find anything. <sighs> Thank you so much. I just want him to come home. Based on the information we've gathered so far, I can only surmise that the sales meeting between the two men was somehow the catalyst for their disappearance. The fire at the warehouse likely played a part in how the situation unfolded, though its exact role is a mystery. Do you have any thoughts? Uh, um, well, Paima was thinking that maybe someone accidentally knocked over an oil lamp and, um... Nope, never mind. Paimon's brain needs to rest for a while. Over to you! Right, I very much agree with you. It seems highly likely that we're missing a piece of the puzzle. Working off what we know so far, there are too many things that don't add up. The chances are that there are still some clues left for us to discover. One fact that I keep coming back to is that Amenoma Yuya is polite and well-mannered, while Mr. Nagato is introverted and passive. Neither seems like the type of person who is inclined towards initiating conflict. Mr. Nagato, being heavily in debt, is also the only one of them with the potential motive to disappear after the fire. The more I ponder it, the more puzzling it becomes. Just what could have happened there? Right. Although the time frame seems to broadly match, no other details that we've learned seem to link the two events together. Amenoma Yuya lacks a key distinguishing feature of the attacker, namely that he is principally a practitioner of the blade testing techniques of Amenoma art, not those of the combat oriented Ishin art. Darn! We thought we could 
could get two birds with one stone here, but at this rate, it's starting to look like a wild goose chase. Hmm. Let's keep going, since we've come this far. If we can solve the case, both Mr. Amenoma and Mrs. Nagato will be able to get some closure. Okay, but where should we go now? Let's head out of the city and check out the warehouse. There's still a chance we may be able to find some shreds of evidence. Wait. I hear something ominous in the wind. Oh! This must be another one of those sounds that only you can hear. As sketchy as that whole thing seems, you did put it to good use when we were chasing down that vision thief at Beto's tournament, so... Hmm... Now I'm picking up a strong scent in addition to the sound. It's right around here somewhere. But... there's nothing here! It's gone now, but I can still sense the direction it left in. It felt very much like that ancient presence in Inazuma. The remnants of the Tatarigami. Indeed. But this unexpected spring of inauspicious energy may prove to be of benefit to our investigation. We should remain vigilant and approach slowly. Huh! So it's an underground warehouse! The force is definitely coming from down below. The source of the Tatarigami energy has long since left this place. But the residue it left behind still hasn't dissipated completely. Judging from the concentration, I would have to conclude that the Tatarigami source resided here for a very long time. Mrs. Nagato said her husband used to hang around the warehouse by himself a lot. It could well be that he was already under the influence of Tatarigami energy at that time. From what I've been told, Tatarigami does not turn all upon whom it preys into violent monsters, but most will develop a stubborn streak upon being exposed to the Tatarigami's unfulfilled will. Their interests become fanatical obsessions. Mr. Nagato had an interest in collecting to begin with. The influence of Tatarigami could explain why he became an obsessive hoarder, Amassing more and more possessions, even as he put himself in grave debt. Um, so what should we do now? Go down and take a look? Step back. I'll open the door and take a look inside. If we don't open this door, we can move no closer to the truth. You needn't worry. Both of us have faced far greater dangers than this. Relatively speaking, the risk here is trivial. Ah. Hmm. What's down there? Everything's buried in debris. I can't see anything. It looks like the fire caused a cave-in, reducing the entire warehouse to rubble. All we can do now is keep searching in the direction that the Tatarigami energy source left this place. Two ordinary humans, entangled with the Tatarigami. I fear much misfortune has already befallen them. Yes, let's go. If nothing else, it's vital that we find out where this Tatarigami energy is coming from. Quiet your mind and focus on what you sense around you. Perhaps you, too, will perceive its ominous presence in the wind. From this point, the trail appears to split into two. The main source of the Tatarigami energy continued on into the distance, 
but a small portion remained here and seems to be dissipating slowly. <laughs> Quite possibly. Let's search the area. Something seems to be drawing their attention. Let's take a closer look. There is no escape! Going oh, yeah. in! Luba, get them! Things are about to get dicey. By the looks of it, a letter, written on a piece of torn clothing. The ink is bone dry. It must have been written quite some time ago. Well, let's take a look. Mm -hmm. According to this letter, a conflict arose because Amenoma Yuya wanted to seize a blade belonging to Mr. Nagato. Yuya started the fire that destroyed the warehouse and wounded Mr. Nagato in the fight. Mr. Nagato kept chase as long as he could, eventually stopping here to write this letter when his strength gave out. So, where is he? He was not only mortally wounded, but also under the heavy influence of Tatarigami. Add to that the fact that its aura seems to have attracted a horde of monsters, and... I'm afraid he may no longer be with us. Whatever traces there may have been of his fate beyond after this point, they've since been disturbed by the hilly churls. There's nothing more for us to find here. Yes. Right now, we need to uncover some more important truths. If Amenoma Yuya is attacking other people indiscriminately, then the longer we take to find him, the more people risk meeting the same tragic end. Right! So let's get moving! I wouldn't be surprised if he, too, fell prey to the influence of the Tatarigami. For a practitioner of the martial arts, the easiest desire to inflame would be their pursuit of further power and skill. All the clues that at first seemed disparate and disconnected, it seems that now we know the thread that runs between them. I have a hypothesis that, if it's correct, not only explains the series of events leading to the two men's disappearance, but also zeroes in on the attacker's identity. Wait! You figured it out? So these two cases are connected after all? I believe so. But it's something of an outlandish idea. I will only be able to confirm my suspicions once we've met him in person. On with the search. We must stay vigilant. At any point now, we may find ourselves in danger. Take it easy. He seems to have stayed here for a long time. Why here? Is there anything special about this place? I'm not sure. But on closer examination, I sense that the aura may have lingered here at several different points in time. <laughs> Show yourself! It's no use hiding anymore! Hmm. Kaede Harakazua. It's you, at last. Aha! So it is the same guy from before! What's your problem, huh? What could you possibly have against Kazua? Indeed, there should be no enmity between us. If it is Amenoma Yuya that stands before us. But what if instead of facing Amenoma Yuya, 
We are in fact facing the blade in his hand. Now that you mention it, it is giving off a strange light. Whoa, whoa! Surely you don't mean... Are you serious? Tatarigami energy often lodges itself within physical objects, then works to subtly affect any living organisms in its vicinity. The blade has resided in Mr. Nagato's warehouse for many years, affecting his state of mind, and more recently using the sail as a means to affect, or rather, as a means to occupy, Amenoma Yuya's body. Hmm. You're sharper than I thought. You've already deduced the truth of the matter. Many, many years ago, I was forged by a famed bladesmith of the Ishin tradition. I was his pride and joy. In me, he placed all his hopes and dreams. As a descendant of the Kaidehara clan, you should be able to guess our greatest regret. I presume it has something to do with the Raiden Gokaden. Indeed. At that point in time, he failed to live up to the Raiden Shogun's expectations. In the end, all he could do was to flee the nation by sea on a ship bound for Snezhnaya. He was a bladesmith of great renown, a master of his craft. There was nothing that he could not accomplish. All he needed was more time and a little faith. And sure enough, in the end, he achieved what he had set out to do. All of his life's work, his wisdom, his skill, it culminated in his creation of me. He not only bestowed upon me the greatest of strength, but also endowed me with a consciousness of my own. In her conceit, the Raiden Shogun lost not only the single most perfect blade in the entire world, but also an irreplaceable achievement in the art of blade forging. So... swords can become conscious and control people? The people of the time in which I was born never believed I had that kind of power. They saw me as a mere blade, a sharp and well-crafted one but in all other respects, an ordinary weapon. <sighs> but that gave me the opportunity to take action. After the death of my creator, I decided to leave Snezhnaya and began my long quest to return to the distant land of Inazuma. Moving from one person to the next, I controlled the minds of countless hosts along the way, each bringing me one step closer to my ancestral home. I seek but one thing, to face the full force of the Raiden Shogun's blade and prove my power, the might of Isin art! Ah, so Amenoma Yuya was not your first victim. Tell me, what happens to those you've possessed when you've finished using them? My hosts? Who cares what happens to them? They are but tools that serve my mission. When they got tired, or injured, or unusable, I hopped to the next one in line. All I needed them for was to take me back to Inazuma. You're awful! After I returned to Inazuma, I decided to bide my time in Nagato's warehouse until Amenoma Yuya handed himself over to me on a silver platter. At long last, I'm approaching my journey's destination. By Amenoma Yuya's body, I have found you. And by your hand, I shall defeat the Raiden Shogun! Kaidehara Kazuha, you stood against the Raiden Shogun's Muso no Hitotachi. There can be no other to serve as my host for what is to come. Now, give your body over to me! Busted! You're toast! Let's light it up! Join me and sever that divine light! Wind strike! Shall be right history! Everybody stand back! Time to go! Shall be right history! Ch -ch 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 
fallen leaves. Adorn my neck. Now you shall right perish. History. Shine down. Do not stand in my way, or I will strike you down too. Your bluff's fooling no one. You've lost. Lost? I can never lose. It is this body that has reached its limit, nothing more. Even if you defeat me here, the one who falls will not be me, but this man. He is but a puppet that can be replaced. I can take a new vessel at will. The end result is the same! I will end this wretch's life before you can lift a finger! And even if I were to lose my physical form, it is but a small setback. My consciousness shall endure. By any means necessary, and any medium available, I shall return and fulfill my destiny! Your fighting style, it is indeed the forms of Ishin art. But from your movements, I sense only hatred and arrogance as well as a thinly-veiled mania and despair. Really? You can tell all that just from his moves? As I've mentioned before, the forms of Ishin art convey the user's thoughts and feelings. Since the blade is currently possessing Aminoma Yuya's body, its movements express the innermost thoughts of the blade. If you ask me, the mania is probably due to your desperate, single-minded ambition. You believe I am your only hope. Are you trying to claim that I am helpless without you? On his deathbed, he passed to me all of Ishin Art's secrets. The little that you know barely scratches the surface. In that regard, why would I ever need your help? Because all of that is in the past. I've been wondering why you've not caused more trouble in all the years that you've been in Inazuma if you are indeed a cursed blade that can possess its owner. Now that I've seen inside your mind, everything finally makes sense. You weren't biding your time. You were trapped. Hmm. After all the time that's passed, you have grown weak, to the point that you are now unable to acquire a new host without making physical contact. Oh, that's right. Paimon remembers now. Mr. Nagato had a habit of never touching his collectibles. Only when Mr. Nagato witnessed his wife's distress and decided to sell his collectibles, did you finally have an opportunity to reach out to Aminoma Yuya and make your escape. And what of it? Well, that brings me to my second point. There's a despair in you that is so strong it threatens to overwhelm you. You were determined to fulfill your Maker's ambition, whatever the cost. But this ambition is too grand and too heavy for you to bear. Each step you have taken has come at a great cost. I think you realized your limitations long ago. The more you clenched your teeth and pressed forward, the greater your fear of losing everything you had achieved grew, and the more you wished to run from the truth. But the way I see it, what began as an ambition has long since become a delusional fantasy. What would you know about any of this? I'm just one step away from achieving my goal! You returned to Inazuma to prove the unparalleled brilliance of Ishin art. But to make this arduous journey, you committed countless atrocities and showed a blatant disregard for human life. Even if you were to sever that divine light, is this truly the outcome that your Maker would have desired? You... Sure, you inherited the secrets of Ishin art. But even as you made your journey to honor this legacy, you treated the ones who wielded you as mere tools to do your bidding. How could you possibly unleash the full potential of Ishin art when you act in perfect discordance with the principle of harmony between a blade and its bearer? Silence, you blabbering fool! I must achieve my goal. This was his life's dream, and the very purpose for which I was brought into being! I will concede that you are most perceptive. You see my predicament clearly. 
but you also underestimate my resolve. And you should face reality. Easy for you to say. Facing reality offers me nothing. I have no need of anything that would stand in my way. Not hesitation, not self-reflection, and certainly not your so-called reality. It is pointless to argue further, descendant of the Kaidahara clan. If you wish to save this man, then offer me your body in exchange. How stubbornly you stick to your wayward path. I do not believe for a second that you can challenge the almighty Shogun in your current state. So let us make a bet, and I will put your strength to the test. What? Surely you're not planning to agree to his demands. Very well. Then find yourself some enemies with whom you wish to cross blades. A taste of my power will more than convince you. Once we have dealt with them, we shall proceed to Tenshukaku. And as for your end of the bargain, if you lose, you must release Amenoma Yuya from your control. I accept. Don't do this, Kazuha! This is the only way to save Amenoma Yuya. If we don't do this, he'll forever be the Blade's puppet. The Cursed Blade's strength is currently very weak, and I sense he's hesitating. This suggests his heart is still not completely devoid of honor. The power of the Tatarigami lies in intensifying existing obsessions. This is the reason Mr. Nagato and Aminome Yuya fell prey to it. Since I don't have any similar kinds of obsessions, I should be able to put up some resistance for a while. But... even so... Even if things take a turn for the worse, I still have you both here with me. We have a chance here to save an innocent victim. I am willing to accept the risks entailed. Your disdain for me betrays your woeful ignorance. I agreed to this bet because there are things I wish to learn too. Now, take me in your hand. I'm okay. I felt a little dizzy at first, but only for a moment. It's all right. So far, this was as I expected. I will. Thank you. What should we do next? Have you got a plan, Kazuha? We find some enemies. Although this blade has endured much turmoil, it probably hasn't experienced many real fights. If a blade built for Ishin art cannot enter a state of harmony between blade and bearer, it cannot unleash its true power. If he wants to avoid reality, then we need to fight until he has no choice but to face it. He shouldn't last long in an intense combat situation. Wait a minute! Paimon remembers hearing about something from the Adventurers Guild! Since the Takasukasa clan abandoned that secret base, it's been held by Ronin ever since! Ah, all right. Please lead the way. What about Amanoma Yuya? What should we do with him? The Blade says he'll let Amanoma Yuya trail us silently. Although he hasn't regained his own consciousness yet, he is not in any immediate danger. This is a good idea. It's a pretty treacherous journey. Okay, fine. Just be careful. Leave everything on this journey to me. Let's get you on the best. 
as one with wind and cloud. How are you feeling? You okay? I'm all right. The blade is performing largely as I expected. Having gone so long without proper use and maintenance, it's become very difficult to use. Though he's making every effort to persevere, I do not think he can last much longer. Hmm. Something else on your mind? How strange. Rather than trying to control me, he is instead trying to match my fighting rhythm. Let's keep going. that his strength is slowly fading away. The blade is becoming more and more difficult for me to wield. He cannot hold out much longer. If he keeps persisting, he will likely break apart at any moment. But what would that do to Amanoma Yuya? I will be careful with it. He also says he does not have any plans to give up easily. He's still trying to achieve his goal. like he's reached his limit. The sheen's grown a bit dimmer again. It doesn't look anywhere near as impressive as it did at the start. Perhaps this time, we'll finally have a chance to see his true form. True form? What are you talking about? Uh, huh? What the? Is this the same blade as before? It looks like a piece of junk! If you choose to continue in the state you're in, you wouldn't even be able to beat Samurai and Kairagi, much less the Almighty Shogun. Maybe you did truly wield power to rival the Shogun's light when first forged, but the long journey from Snezhnaya back to Inazuma has left you battered and broken. It barely needs stating anymore. Your ambition is a flight of fancy. I finally figured out why it was that you agreed to my bet. You wanted to reach a state of harmony with me. For perhaps then you would still be able to wield commendable power. But regrettably, we are nothing alike. I will never understand your obstinacy and cruelty, nor can I empathize with the one who made you. The only one who truly understood you had already passed away by the time you were born. Huh? What's that supposed to mean? Here they are! Take them down! Can help this time. 
Don't worry. I'll use my own blade. It's just more of the same. It's my lucky day! <laughs> There's more! Finally, I... This will do! Fallen leaves, adorn my knight's wind strike! Cut down! Better with your own sword. <sighs> you are a true Kaidehara in flesh and in spirit. Though we fought briefly together, you have seen me for who I really am. No one knew anything of my story throughout my travels, nor did I tell it to anyone. You are the first person to know the truth. I thought that if I could achieve Ishin harmony with you, Perhaps there would still be a ray of hope for me. But in this too you have failed. Indeed. No matter how hard I tried, I could not attain that perfect harmony that your personal blade does with you. Too much time has passed. My physical state is poor and without proper maintenance. I can only disguise my true appearance behind an outer sheen. Yours is the blade that took on the Muso no Hitotachi. And what a magnificent blade it is. Perhaps I shall never reach that level of glory. Actually, this is just a generic blade that I picked up during my travels in Liyue. What? Forging and maintenance are both important for a blade, but they are not everything. This blade has traveled the land with me for many years, and we have formed a close bond during that time. Plus, in the moment that I most needed it, I received aid from another power. Skill, blade, determination, and desire. All these must be aligned in the practice of Ishin art. <sighs> there is something else I must tell you. Though your Maker may not have been aware, your ability to possess your own consciousness derived from the power of the Tatarigami. Tatarigami is a malevolence from the ancient past. It is the source of your mania and savagery. Though you tried to cooperate with me while I was wielding you, the part of you driven by Tatarigami was constantly trying to seize control of my body. I sensed it, but I couldn't change it. It is an integral part of my consciousness. I resisted its temptations because I wanted to save Amenoma Yuya. But I do not know whether you yourself have any intention of trying to fight it. I feel a great sense of regret for you. Since you embarked on a journey bound for a destination you were destined never to reach. The moment you embarked on this journey, you lost the only person who could have ever unleashed your true potential. And yet there was no way for you to turn your back on his ambition. You have known this for a long time. It is the true source of your despair. He gave me everything. My life, my form, my consciousness and purpose. How could I possibly deny him his wish? I said to him, do not worry, from here on I shall forge your legacy. How could I go back on my word? Aww. I believe our bet is now settled. I have nothing further to say. Where are you going, Kazuha? He now has neither the ability nor the motivation to cause further harm. Let's give him some time to reflect on things. <sighs> when I touched the hilt for the first time, it's as if I was transported to a strange dimension. It was somewhere I've never been. A bladesmith lay quietly on the bed, his frail face barely visible under the moonlight. 
His breaths were weak, and his life near its end. A newly forged blade lay by his side, listening attentively to his final words. Wow, that was the blade's memory, wasn't it? Indeed. While in exile in Snezhnaya, the bladesmith eventually learned the truth behind everything that had happened. The Ishin art had been dealt a devastating blow by the desertion of its best smiths. He spent the rest of his life in the forge, not to vent his frustration and hatred, but to atone for his actions. He felt intense regret at being tricked by the Fatui, but he could never again return to his homeland. His sole wish was to one day return his single, proudest creation back to the land of his birth. So he instructed this sentient blade to find a way back to Inazuma, no matter how long or how hard the journey. But he never wished to rival the gods. All he wanted to show was that they once shone brilliantly as blade and smith. That they were still worthy of being trusted. So that's the true story. But after that, the blacksmith's intentions were worked by the Tatari Gami, slowly turning his proud creation into the cursed blade of today. Right. I believe the bladesmith might never have known that the power he worked with was that of the Tatari Gami. The hatred within that power is what sent the blade down its ill-fated path. This blade has committed unforgivable atrocities, but only because it lost its original master. No one was there to correct its errors when it was losing its way. <sighs> Shame it's too late now. Yes, it is too late. Time would not wait or stop because of his determination. While the world moved on, his ambition remained stubbornly stuck at that fleeting moment at the dawn of his journey. He seems to have calmed down, though. Let's go and check in. <sighs> when I look back at the past, I can remember the day of my forging like it was just yesterday. I once told him that I would pay any price to fulfill his wishes. Such was the debt I owed to him for giving me the gift of consciousness. But darkness and slaughter numb the mind. Over time, I lost sight of the difference between gratitude and grudge. Not only did I fail to fulfill his ambition, I also defiled it. You are finally seeing reality clearly. Since we agreed to the terms of the bet, I will honor the agreement and release Amenoma Yuya. But I still cannot bring myself to forsake his ambition. It is the entire purpose for my existence. So, may I ask you to help me fulfill the ambitions of myself and my creator? Hey! Now you're adding yours into the mix, too? Jeez, don't push your luck, mister! It has to be done in this order. At least hear what I have to say. And if you don't agree, I will still release Amenoma Yuya, as promised. My physical form, as well as the knowledge I possess, should still be of some value to you. His attitude has grown a lot milder. What do you think, Kazuha? Should we give him a chance? Let's hear it. Thank you all. When I was first forged, my Maker was already terminally ill. He told me that he had wanted me to have the grandest opening battle. Alas, after that, he never rose from his sickbed again. Nor have I ever had the chance to prove myself in battle sense. My fights were devoid of any noble meaning. They were merely the next step in my never-ending journey the next in a long line of transgressions. You are a fine warrior. I would like to request your hand in battle and experience a true duel between samurai. Oh, and who would be the opponent? 
I will release Ame no Mayuya and restore his consciousness. Perhaps after that, you can convince him to commit to a fight with you. You must have plenty of reasons to both hate me and desire a good fight. Understood. Then let's start by waking him up and seeing if he has the stamina and will to fight. I see. He used my body to inflict harm on others. I utterly despise him and his actions. But since he stayed true to your agreement by releasing me, he must still have some remaining semblance of honor. If a duel can help to set this state of affairs in order, I am willing to put myself forward. I do not wish to be a mere victim in this story. There's no need to worry. We'll vouch for your innocence to the Terrio Commission. Thanks for your help. Who knows how this would have ended without your intervention. All right, then let's move on. More Ronin could appear at any moment. We can't stay here. In any case, for a final duel, I think we should aim for a greater sense of ceremony. This reminds Paimon a bit of the Crux Clash! Yep, we still can't let our guard down. Even now, Paimon has a sneaking suspicion that Blade hasn't told us everything. Still, even if he's way past the point of redemption, it's hard not to feel a teensy bit sorry for him. Are you ready? Ready? Okay. All right, then. Successor of Ishin Art, Kaidahara Kazuha. Successor of Amenoma Art, Amenome Yuya. Honored to cross blades with you. It is my honor also. Wind strike! Clouds high. The birds come. Time to go. Thank you for the experience. Although he appears battered and broken, in your hands it seems he's regained a glimmer of brilliance. His sense of savage cruelty has completely faded away. But that same sense of determination remains strong. You also fought well. I'm sure he relished the experience. There are a few things that I shall leave him to tell you himself. I must apologize to you for all that has transpired. You need not seek my forgiveness, nor do I have the right to forgive you on your victim's behalf. It is too late for all of that. I do not wish for forgiveness. I only hope that you will see my transgressions as mine alone and not let them stain the legacy of Ishin art. I strayed far from the straight and narrow path, but the Ishin art still has a worthy successor in Kaidehara Kazuha. I beseech you, please understand this. Yes, I too trust Mr. Kaidehara to do the right thing. Thank you, successor of Amenoma art. This blade has also told me that he has another wish. He would like to visit the Amenoma smithy. Maybe we can go back there together. What does he want to go there for? I'm not sure, but I think that all this is about to come to an end. Oh, it's Yuya! You have returned! I am sorry to have troubled you. It's all thanks to them that I was able to return safely. A prized Ishin blade. 
turned weapon that controls the human mind. <sighs> Considering their forging philosophy, this was indeed within the realm of possibility. This is a great pity. But I have some good news as well. Ryuji from the Bantan Sango Detective Agency tells me that they've found the missing Mr. Nagato. Really? Is he okay? Yes. Badly wounded, but he will live. And now that Yuya is back, it seems like the final ending to this story is a happy one after all. I think I know what you want to do. What's wrong, Kazuha? Is the blade whispering in your ear again? Yes. He said he wants to take control of me for a brief moment. What? No way! Hasn't it learned its lesson? He tells me that he's thought of another way to fulfill his Maker's wish. And he assures me that he won't use my body for anything nefarious. I have decided... to let him do it. You... but... he... Ugh. Guess there's nothing we can say to change your mind, huh? Thank you. I will explain my reasons later. Okay. I am ready. Let us begin. Please, stay true to your promise. My power is almost spent. Without him, my eventual demise is inevitable. But if I abandon the future to give everything I have in this moment, my physical form can be forged anew. Everything? You mean... Yes. The cost is my entire consciousness. You were right. There's nothing that I can accomplish now. But there's still a chance for Ishii art. Once remade, I will be a valuable resource for your studies. <laughs> Ishii lives on, and its finest hour is yet to come. Even if I am not the one to prove its might to the Shogun, as long as it is an Ishin blade, crafted by Kaedehara hands, it will still fulfill his final wish. Thank you, son of the Kaedehara clan. Over the years, my real name has been forgotten by all. I'm ashamed to utter it, yet it remains strong in my mind. Kagotsurube Ishin. This name is now yours to keep. Hmm. Rest in peace. to be done in that order. His consciousness will disappear forever after fulfilling the bladesmith's wish. Kagotsurube Ishin. It was the first time I ever heard his name. It seems like deep down he disapproved of his own actions and thus chose to bury this name deep within his heart. Only in the final moments before his consciousness faded, was he willing to entrust it to another? Seems like he really, really wanted to fulfill his Maker's wish! The same fervent ambition that gave him the motivation to keep going forward also fueled the stubborn determination that blinded him to the path ahead. Speaking for myself, I'd rather see him recognize and atone for his mistakes than see him punished for them. I understand. Perhaps this is a flaw in my personality. I've always been captivated by grand aspirations. Hearing his wish to rival the Divine Light touched something inside of me. Just as the sight of those who fought to repeal the Vision Hunt Decree did. Your quest to face the gods and trace your sibling inspires me in the same way. After everything I've seen, Perhaps these pursuits fascinate me a little more than they should. Oh, Kazuha. 
I will continue to support you from this point on. Know that you will have my assistance whenever you need it. Wait! Shouldn't we also go update Kujo Kamaji? Oh, you're right. We need to tell him about the findings of our investigation. And it's also time to give him a response to the offer he made me. Ah, oh, you've returned. I hear that the issue has been resolved. Uh, though this was a treacherous investigation indeed, we're most fortunate that no lives were lost. The Tenryo Commission has already attended to the danger at the warehouse. The investigation into Ama no Mayuya should conclude soon. I do not believe he will be charged with any crime. Wow, you sure kept your ear to the ground. Then we needn't recount all the details again. Now, as to your earlier offer, I wish to give you my answer. Please, take a look at this blade. What's this? Kagotsurube Ishin. A weapon crafted using a long-lost blade-forging art of the Kaidahara clan. By means of a series of fortuitous events, I was able to recover and restore him. I also promised him that I will continue to study and pass on the secrets of Ishin art. And so, it looks like I will likely continue with my journey across the nations, learning more about this blade as I go. Uh, I see. I understand. The Kaidahara clan has always been a family of bladesmiths, so it is only proper for me to continue on this path. Were I to accept your goodwill, I may find myself embroiled in conflicts between the Shogunate and Sangonomiya. That would not suit me. Ah, uh, you misunderstand. That was most certainly not our intent. I am aware, but I still desire to continue walking my own path. Very well. I can understand. Then let's pretend this offer was never raised. However, if you should ever change your mind or find yourself in need of the Shogunate's assistance, please do not hesitate to inform me. Great. Thank you for your generosity. Where will you travel to next, Kazuha? Hmm. I'll probably take to the seas with Captain Beto again for now. As for my next destination... Let's see where the wind takes me. Mr. Nagato's survival is the one silver lining in this whole catastrophe. We will continue to monitor his condition and hope he recovers soon. Thank you. 